For Richard Calhoun Creekside Realty, 40 years working with consumers here in Silicon Valley. We're here to talk about the real estate market in the past week. We'll get back to that slide. What I've done here is everything to the right of the vertical purple line is 2020 data. Everything to the left is 2021 data. I deleted week 28. We are in week 27. So this is the current data point for this year. And so you can see that inventory, total of inventory for San Mateo County, Santa Clara County, condos, townhouses, and single family homes is only about 85% of what you'd expect. Five-year normal that I'm comparing it to is 2015 and 19. And that's important because all those five years were good years. So this would be less inventory than you expect in a good year, which gives you a superheated marketplace. Now, related to that is the new inventory for just the past week. And that's somewhat interesting because we're based basically having exactly the num right number of new listings coming on the market every week. And you might say, well, how are we having the right number of listings coming on the market every week and having not enough inventory? That's because the rust color line up here is demand. And you can see that's consistently above the five-year median. So we've had way more demand than we should. And if you have the normal activity on the seller side and more buyer demand, that's going to give you less inventory. Now, what's also really interesting is look at the sharp increase last week, followed by the sharp decrease this week. That's the impact that holidays have on the data. And it actually isn't on the data, it's on the real marketplace. So last week, sellers don't put their house on the market going into a holiday weekend, but buyers continue to look. Coming out of the holiday weekend, the sellers put their house on the marketplace, but there was nothing for buyers to buy from the previous week. So the sales drops way down. So I expect us to go back up to about where we've been somewhere around the 130% of normal next week. So this is not rapid changes in the marketplace, in my opinion. You know, the marketplace is basically steady state. What's happened is we've had the influence of a holiday come in and impact what buyers and sellers do. Because of that impact, day, days of unsold inventory, which is the single biggest indicator in the marketplace, it's basically the supply demand ratio expressed in days to sell the current rate of inventory inventory, because of that holiday, you can see days of unsold inventory skyrocketed. We went from somewhere around 18 days of unsold inventory for the macro marketplace up to something like 33 days. That would be a huge shift in a normal marketplace. I mean, I'd be sounding every alarm bell in the building if that was actually not associated with some outside impact like the holiday. Because it's related to the holiday, I'm not worried about it at all. I would expect this number to come back dramatically down next week. So again, you can see the discontinuity between 2020 data on the right and 21 data on the, the left. The lower days of unsold inventory is the better. And this red line is actually the shaded area. I didn't bring it back up after I did some work on the graph. It should be all the way up at the red line, just like the blue rectangle. So anything from the red line, even though it's not shaded red, downward is a red hot seller's marketplace. So you can see, you know, the five-year median, we're sort of normally getting into a balanced marketplace. That is not going to happen this year. In fact, I think I shared last week that if anything, I think we're sort of like in a 2017 year where we had a second round of appreciation. This now is looking at the macro data. It's looking at closed data because I need closed data to get the sale price. And it's looking at the sale price to list price ratio and then plotting it. Each line represents one week. The purple line through here is the current week. And it, you know, it's sort of interesting is when you look at it up on the top here, it's sort of below the cluster. Here, it's sort of on the very, very top end and above everybody. And down here at the low end, it's above. And that distortion isn't very common. I think the reason we're seeing it is because the low number of transactions that happened last week, that are closed last week. And the reason there was a low number of closings last week, Monday was a holiday. People don't like to close on Tuesday, especially after a long weekend, because they typically would have had to pay interest over the weekend, you know, which is an extra day. So you're paying for three days of interest without owning the house instead of just one day. So you really ended up with only Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for recording. So you essentially lost two out of the five days and normally you use one. So you lost one out of 
five days to record. So, you know, the whole thing is just gets goofed up by holidays. But what it does say, because it may be a trend, is at the low end, the demand is high enough that more buyers are bidding a little bit higher than they typically do. But at the top end, where people don't feel they really have to overbid, is dropping off a little bit. So I think it's a statistical fluctuation, but it is something that's noteworthy because you can sort of see, you know, yes, there is squiggle in each line, but for the squiggle to be enough that it really stands out sort of at the lower end here and mostly at the lower end, and then a little bit in the mid range and then at the very high end, I thought was noteworthy. So that's why I'm commenting about it. And basically the concept here is as the market heats up, the lines go up to, and to the right. The red dotted line is the best month we ever had. And the blue dotted line is the worst month. You can see we're way closer to the best month than we are to the worst month. In the recent time frame, the dotted lines are the oldest, followed by the dashed lines and followed by the solid lines. So the market had been increasing. And then basically for something like the last 12 weeks, you know, it's been fairly constant with no real improvement. You know, it's it's a great marketplace place if you're a seller, but it's not continuing to heat up. It's sort of like at a plateau. This is depreciation. And I was a little surprised. Normally, you can look at Santa Clara County single family homes and get a trend of what's going on. And you can see 24.1, 24.4, 24.1. It's been fairly steady. Now it dropped down to 21.1. That's a pretty significant drop. Again, you know, I wouldn't make a whole lot of heads or tails out of it because the holiday limited less a number of transactions closing than normal. It was also holdovers from the end of June, which might tend to be lower priced homes because those buyers tend to maybe struggle a little bit more to get their financing. Again, I'm going to watch and see what happens next week. It's completely different story. You know, going into the holiday, the market looked a whole lot better, but that was because you were having less inventory coming on the market and still the buyers. Now it doesn't look so good, but I think it's just the holiday. And I think next week we'll be back to where we were. So that's my quick recap. I'll pause for questions and then we'll go into a slower paced interactive question. The green is my what I call my root URL to get to today's presentation live. You add in the year 2021 to get the handout and it is posted. You add the word handout and the eight digit year month date code, which would be 2021-0710. And to get to the archives, you just put in the eight digit year month date code without the word handout. Any questions? I'm not hearing anybody, so I will move on. Now what we're doing is breaking down down a little bit. Oh, and just for disclosure, just in case anyone's looking for the monthly data, I do not have the monthly data. I think what I'm going to do going forward, starting with this month, is record monthly data separately, just post it, and just focus on the weekly data. And I may end up focus, uh, phasing out the monthly data because... The weekly data is really the monthly data once every five weeks type of thing. So I don't have monthly data. I will post, uh, do a recording offline and post it on my YouTube channel. And I think that's what I'll probably be doing going forward. I'll just randomly post it probably very close to the fifth of the month and then uh, let people know it's up there. If you subscribe, you'll get it. Anyway, back to the July 10th current day, we're now looking at the what makes up days one sold inventory. Since I believe days one sold inventory is the biggest single indicator, let's look at here. Here we are at 36.5. Obviously, this is an error. You can't have zero days of inventory. Um, that's something I'll look into. But 36.5. So when I've, you know, know, thought it was 33, it's actually 38.8. And that's based on one week. Based on five weeks, it's at 21.6. But now if you go back to the data, and I, I'm doing this off the top of my head, I think it was a 15.6 or maybe it was 16.5. So again, that's a dramatic increase on the five-week basis. But that's, again, just because of the holiday. And you can see the impact of the holiday when you're looking at this 36. There's no way we went from 21.6 to 36. It's, again, simply the lack of new inventory for buyers to buy. So if there's nothing for buyers, buyers to buy, they basically take the week off. If there's no sales and you're only looking at one week, that really slows, you know, indicates the market slowing down. So DUI increases. This is one of the reasons why when I started doing this data analysis in 97, I looked at one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, and six weeks to find out what was the best reflection of the data. 
It turned out four and five weeks was pretty much a toss up. I went with five weeks for uh, several different reasons, but I, I think that was the right choice. And that's why it's still my standard today. But one week is important when we were trying to figure out what's going on with COVID. And, you know, it's interesting to see the huge impact that holidays have. Saying it is one thing, but seeing it in the number is just different. But there really isn't any change in the pattern. Single family homes are generally the fastest, followed by condos. And Santa Clara County is typically faster now than San Mateo County. And I say now because historically San Mateo County was the faster county. And I think that's related to people not needing to be close to work, willing to drive a little bit further to get a little bit more home, all related to COVID. Now we go back up to top of the chart and just looking at the input packs. Days on old inventory is the available inventory, the active inventory over the number of offers. When you look at the active inventory, where is the active inventory? It's in the different counties and the different types of properties. So Santa Clara County is about double San Mateo County as far as size. So 814 versus 408 and 475 essentially versus 200. So roughly double the number of in listings in both types of properties. But you have 668 condos and townhouses up from only 604 last week. So you had a 10% increase in the inventory and your single family homes went from 1,600 to basically 1,900 and increased increase of 300, that's a 20% increase. It doesn't surprise me that single family homes reacts more to a holiday than a condo townhouse. A lot of people in a condo townhouse are smaller family units. The holidays aren't as important to them. They don't have the family needs to do holiday events. There's less people in the household to have events going on. And so the impact is less. So none of that really surprises me, but it's interesting to actually see it in the data. Then the, the week above there is the previous week. So the only new line is the current line. The current line then goes up and becomes the previous. Now we will go down to offers and we look at offers over the one week period and then also the, over the five week period. And you can see if you take single family homes in San Mateo County and multiply 62 by five, you're only at 310. But yet in the last five weeks, we sold 559. So you can see how the single the sales really slowed down. So the 36 didn't seem outrageously high. The graph looked like it was 33. The graph and this data point are done independently. Here's days of unsold inventory over time. So it's just looking at the different counties. Santa, uh, Santa Clara County is the red line. And you can see that we may have had a da bad data point right there, but you can see it right here. And you can barely see it right there underneath the yellow. Yellow is Santa Clara County condos and townhouses. Those two are essentially on top of one another. They're both increasing. San Mateo County is a little bit flatter, single family homes in the brown line. But again, anything under 40 days is by definition a very strong seller's marketplace. This is based on the five-week median because that's what I would base behavior of the marketplace on. These numbers around 22, that's just a phenomenal marketplace, even though we were faster earlier. And I think the market has slowed down slightly. But at this time of the year, to have 22 days of unsold inventory is a strong, strong marketplace. Here I blew it out just so you could see a little bit better. It's the same graph, just elongated. So basically at the start, of the graph here is about the first of the year. So you can see the New Year's hump. And then basically it came down and it's been basically a very flat, very strong market for quite a long time. That is not in the handout if you're looking for it, but it's, I think I printed the handout first. Here's the map showing you the different geographical areas. Uh, the slowest area is the white area here. The expensive area is right on the San Mateo County border, Atherton, Menlo Park, Portola Valley, the, that kind of area. When you look at the numbers over here, 15, 16, 18, 12 days for Blossom Valley, Milpitas. I mean, it's hard to get faster than that. You know, you can get faster than 29 in Saratoga. Saratoga, Las Gatos tends to be a slower marketplace. But again, everything's red, a shade of red because the market is on fire. This now is looking at the total active inventory. The gold line is where you'd expect inventory to be. The blue line is where we are. You can see the dramatic drop down last year um, week, a drop of 250 from week to week, but it came back up. 
because it came back up, I expect inventory to come back up next week or not inventory, number of offers accepted. You can see the five-year median smoothed out a little bit. And that's because July 4th impacts week number 26 or 27, or as it did this year, or 25 and 26, depending on where it falls within the week. And when you're doing five years, it smooths out that impact a little bit. And here's where you're getting the full front um, brunt of that impact. Now you're looking at the new listings, more prevalent on you know what happened in the given week. And you can see the five-year median sort of came down a week earlier and took two weeks. So one, because there's a data point here, there's a data point here, and there's a data point here. So the median, it came down over two weeks. The current data came down over one week, much more compressed. July 4th was on Sunday. The holiday was this past Monday. So, you know, it's not sort of a week where people would split it where... Richard? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Uh, can you go back to the previous page? Totally. That you were talking about active without yep. any offer. Yep. Just, uh, yeah. Because I think I wanted to see is uh, the blue line, uh, it's going up, right? I mean, from last week to this week. It went up dramatically from last week to this week. Right. And then I think this uh, this uh, information can be reflected in your table. The ones that we're talking about that you have a, you have a, a problems with that table because I think there yeah here it is so we can look at it active and so current is 18 and previous 16 so this this is this is a good way this to is, identify right yeah, yeah well yeah you, you went from 650 in Santa Clara County single family homes active last week right 814 so you had an so increase of 164 yeah, right so yeah even the macro macro is increased too. So the yeah, I think that that's what I wanted to see the your numbers with your chart. Yeah, yeah the, the the macro jumped to almost 300. Right. But again, it went down the week before this, and then it went back up. Now the number that I was questioning is this 156. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm just. Yep. Looking You're talking at about that. total inventory. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. You're more than welcome. Here's the inventory where we were. So we did a dip down and then we're back up and we're basically at the same level we were the previous week. So basically this is the oddball week. And that's what I'm basically saying is you have an oddball week, but the sellers basically have their oddball week the week before the holiday. The buyers have their oddball week the week after the holiday because of the lag time. A seller puts their home on the marketplace. They expose it for a weekend. The buyers then buy it. So yeah. that's the week difference that we're looking at between the two. And that's why days when sold inventory fluctuates so dramatically. Right. So this That's chart, right. this chart, instead of looking at total inventory, is just looking at the number of new inventory coming on in a given week. So you can see that the two match fairly well. So, you know, if you were to look at this chart alone, you'd expect us to be having essentially a normal year. We have the same, the right number of new listings coming in every single week. You'd expect the market to be behaving normally. Again, what's not shown on new listings is what's happening to the demand side. So now we'll look at the demand side and there it is. The demand, the blue line for the current year is way above the five-year median where you'd expect it to be. And then here is the plummet down for last week. And so this this actually gives, okay, so the 350 that was sort of in my mind was the total for macro data, which means Santa Clara County can't be but half of that. So the 150 sounds right. So we only accepted 150 homes offers last week in Santa Clara County. That's that's pretty amazing, but I'm a little more confident, but you can see how dramatic the drop is. You're down at, so call that 360 maybe, and the week before you were maybe at 610. So you're almost cutting it in half based on a, a little holiday. And the bulk of that cut is going to be in the single family side because the condo market isn't impacted as much by holidays. And then this is closings. Closings really don't tell us much. Where, where closings are useful is in the sale price because, and you can sort of, if you do a little bit of work, you can look at the TFT ratio between the offers accepted and the closings. You're not getting any predictor of what the market's doing because this data is based on what happened five, six weeks earlier. Now the frequency of overbidding. So this is the data, that, the use data that you pick up from closed sales. You can see we're up here at something like 88% of the sellers now are getting more than their asking price. And that to me is just unbelievable because we're talking about two counties and we're talking about three two types of properties, single families and condos and townhouses. And so to have 
88% of the sellers getting more than their asking price across that wide of an area, the whole marketplace has to be on fire. And I don't believe we've ever been at this kind of level of overbidding before. So the buyers are clearly feeling the pressure to overbid. You can see a year ago, we were down only at 50%. And again, to the right of the purple line is 2020 data, to the left is 21 data. And I got rid of the connecting of the two lines so it, it's more obvious. And I think that helps out a lot. This is the frequency of overbidding for the different types of property. Clearly, I have a bad data point for the last week that I'll come back and correct, but you can see it, you know, the next day, I get data every single day. So there's seven day, data points between the last time we had a meeting like this. And you can see there's a couple good data points on the outside and good data points in. So basically you draw the line straight through. You know, it's a little bit hard maybe to tell exactly where it goes in San Mateo County, but does it really matter? No. And then this data here was during the uh, data share debacle earlier this year. Here is the frequency of overbidding broken down in the different areas. You can see Cupertino, Sunnyvale at 92.2%. I would be inclined to call that the highest, even though Foster City is at 95.2. And the reason for that is Foster City is just such a small marketplace. It really isn't reflective of the marketplace. One transaction can make a huge difference in what's going on in that micro market area. But you can see they're all high. You know, the lowest here is Atherton and Menlo Park, and still 49% of the sellers are getting more than their asking price. There's no way to call this anything but a hot marketplace. Here's the magnitude of overbidding. So this is how much buyers are overbidding. And you can see we went up quite a bit from last week. And this isn't related to the holiday again, because these are closings and the closings were negotiated five weeks ago. So there's no way it's related to this holiday. You know, if you want to make an argument that was related to the Memorial Memorial Day a holiday and closing five weeks later, that might actually be an argument that's worth looking at. But I mean, there's so many things that impact the marketplace. And that's part of the reason I just looked at what the market's doing instead of trying to figure out why the market's doing what it's doing, just rely on what the market's doing. Now we're looking at the geographical breakdown of the overbidding. And again, the redder the color, the higher, the more the buyers are overbidding. So take an example like South County, pretty pale pink, but they're still getting 106% of Oh, they're overbidding price. I, I watered this down quite a bit earlier this year because the overbidding was so dramatic. I didn't want everything to be saturated red. Frankly, I think this isn't red enough because to have 6% overbid and to have it be a pretty pale pink and come up to San Mateo County and be 2% over and essentially be a white color. I mean, that I, I personally have a problem with that, but that's the only way we can do it and then have areas like San Mateo County up here at 14% over being noticeably redder because there's only a, a, a certain degree of shading that I can do. And I'm sort of using it all up and I'm trying to keep it in the price range. So just keep in mind, you have to look at the scale to get a real number, but the redder the color, the hotter the marketplace. Yeah, Richard, this is a good shade. I like it. Yeah, this is a this is a just right shade. Hey, what, but, but see... I guess just obje objectively, six. If if you went anywhere else in the country and you said sellers were getting six percent over their asking price, they would tell you that you'd have a red hot marketplace. They wouldn't just say it's a hot marketplace. And this this shade of pink to me tells me you have a hot marketplace, not a superheated marketplace. And I would say six percent overbidding is superheated. So that's yeah, that's but, my that's my comment. So yeah, yes, it's it's, it's very, compare. Yeah, you compare with the Cupertino. It is not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you come and compare to Cupertino up here, and you're at 115 percent. And yeah. so yeah, now that that that's and that's exactly sort of the example. Well, between here, you know, Menlo Park here, and uh, Cupertino Mountain View here, that's the whole range, and that's the extent the extent yeah. of my color fluctuation. Mm -hmm. But you know, I could I could play with it a little bit more, but I don't like playing, you know, I only play when I have to because what, what I defined is 99 through 101.5%, I said is no color. So part of it is I'm at 101.5% with no color. So now at Menlo Park Atherton at 2.26% above isn't much above, which is why 
it's you know showing up the way it's showing up but yeah. it, it's, it's the best it's i can good. do i wish you i i wish the red i wish this red here was a deeper red because look how red my cursor is if right. none of you was that red i would be okay but i'm defining this to be saturated red i'm getting a color that i would call almost pink so that's that's my disappointment and that's the third party vendor that i'm using so outside my control, we looked at this slide. I just brought it back up. And the reason I brought it back up is I want to talk about this slide a little bit. Now we're looking at the 12 most recent weeks and you can see how close together they all are. And you can see how the purple line does come up here a little bit and very noticeable here. So out here, it's sort of by itself. So it's basically saying people right in this range and it's from, you know, call it say 70% of the marketplace to maybe something like 90%. So that's 20% of the buyers that are buying right around the zero overbid, right around asking price are pushing the curve higher. So that 20% of the marketplace is buying, paying more than they normally do above asking price. And it's pretty noteworthy, but I think the problem is there's just so, such little inventory, I don't, uh, not inventory, it's closings that because of the three week, re, essentially the three days of recording last week, I think that that will self-correct going forward. This is a heat map where I use both blue and red, and I will use blue and red on the other maps, but I don't feel comfortable using blue for anything above you know, like 99% of the asking price because you can't say it's a nice cold marketplace if sellers are getting more than their asking price. But here what I'm doing is instead of saying ice cold marketplaces, I'm showing affordability. So the bluer the color, the more affordable the marketplace is, the redder the color, le less affordable or more expensive the areas are. And I guess, you know, going back is I could do that. I could use blue to show the slower marketplaces, even though it's a red hot marketplace. It's just, I... It's, you know, I don't want to mark, move my shift all the time. Sorry about that. So over here in the column, you have three numbers. The middle number is the median for the micro markets. The, the lower number, the one on the left is the 10 percentile. And the number on the right is the 90 percentile. So pretty rapidly, you can see what areas you can afford to purchase. in. you know, if we pick like Campbell, Cambrian, Santa Clara, Willow Glen, 80% of the homes are between one and a third million dollars and 2.4 million. So if you're not looking in that price range, that's really not the, the micro market area you should be looking in. But you know, if you get, you, you know, the people that are holding out hope that want to buy a single family home at, at a million dollars, you know, they can say, hey, there's 10% of the homes under 1.3. But I would obviously just look at this and say, hey, you'd be way better off coming up to the Milpitas and looking for something going down to South County, looking in South San Jose, East San Jose, Central San Jose, you know, there's always pockets of homes. You can go over to the San Mateo coast and be a lot nicer. And with, you know, telecommuting, you know, the commute over 92 may not be a problem as much anymore. And here is the closest we'll get to monthly data. And instead of being done on the six for 35 days, I've done it today just to give people an idea of what's going on. So we currently have 793 homes for sale. And if you look, that's a record. The closest year we ever had was 2017. And you know that is probably the year we're most likely to repeat. If we come down to offers and we look at meeting days on the market, an average 15 and eight, if you look back over time, we've never been that quick. And part of the reason for that is we've been in a hot marketplace for a solid year now and there isn't any overpriced turkeys out there you know the buyers are just willing to knock on the doors and write up their offers at what they think is a reasonable price and after two or three or four go arounds the overpriced seller finally accepts an offer so there just isn't anything that's been on the market a long time eight days i mean that's basically one week on the marketplace and your homes are selling 21.6 days on sold inventory you know, that's pretty consistent with 2017, which again, you know, is where I would look for a predictor of what the market's done to do. Meeting at list price of what selling really isn't relevant, in my opinion, sales per day at 36.7. Yeah, we had basically the same number again, 2017. And then you have to come back to 2000 and. 13 and before to get to those kinds of numbers. And this is when we were coming out of the 2007 recession. So there was a lot of uh, investor buying and that kind of stuff going on. And finally, we come down to closings. You can see we're at 110%. I don't think we've ever been at that level before at this time of the year. 
And the frequency of overbidding at 85%, again, nowhere in the past have we been near that number. Our median price, I mean, it was just a few weeks ago, we broke 1.6 million. Now we're at 1.663. So the median price is climbing pretty rapidly. And I think with that, I'll show my URLs again and see if anyone's got a question for me. I am not seeing anyone on mute. So have a nice day. See everybody next yeah. week. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't have any questions. No thank problem. you so much, Richard. You're welcome. Take care.